know him, but he built a massive business, wrote Hall of Fame. If you don't know his story, you should probably read his book. But it is it really is good. But I love the guy, I appreciate him coming up here. We'll get him moving here because he likes Frankie Rollins so much and we'll have him, you know, all that stuff. So Dude, I, we wore that place out last yeah, night. I, know, I heard. I'm jealous, man. I was like, Frankie yeah, right Rollins? Now, is it roll is that how you say it? Rollins? Just so fire. Ooh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ooh, that's good. That's so good. Mm. <laughs> but I didn't even finish tasting it, and it's so good. Yeah. That shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, dude. I deal with you, didn't I? If you yeah. did something, I'd take it? Yeah. Okay. Did you do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you supposed to do? 30K. You hadn't done that yet? No, it was just like last month. He's been like, he's done it I think once and he's been close to it a few times. So. When were you supposed to do it by? <laughs> last month. And you didn't? Why not? Because I failed. Well, I get that. I'm asking why. <laughs> you don't have to be nervous. I'm just curious. Can you do 30? Yeah. So you chose not to do 30? Yeah. My question is why? Yeah, for understanding. I no, I don't want like generic. I just want to know. I want to understand why. Just out of shit curiosity. There's no wrong answer here. Didn't buy enough leads and why? Wasn't here enough. Why not? I don't know. Priorities. That's what I want to know. No, don't answer for him, bro. I'm giving ideas. No. no I want to know why. It's like I know everyone knows if you don't sell enough, it's because you don't have enough clients. And you typically don't have enough clients because you don't have enough leads mm -hmm. or you don't call them. But my question is why? Do you not need the money? Do you not give a shit about 30? I guess really? I was comfortable not getting a 30. I was too comfortable not getting a 30. Meaning like financially? Um, yeah, yeah. I guess. Do you have money? Yeah. Okay. Does this make you nervous? No, I, <laughs> I want more. But yeah. Like, I can live, you know. Okay. So all you want to do is just live? No. How do you want to live? step above where I'm at now. Just one? A lot. One step? A lot of steps. How many steps? How long have you been doing this? About two years. Okay. What's, can you, you good like sharing transparently stuff? Yeah. What's, how much money have you made the last two years? Um, Roughly, just ballpark it. Last year, probably about 70. Okay. About the first year? Uh, first year, I was at another company, a lot less. Okay, that's okay. What would you make there? Probably 30. Okay. How old are you? You're super young, I was I mean, no shit. Okay. Shit, I didn't make 70 until I was fucking almost 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, I ain't mad at it, you know? So 70 is decent money, but it's not, you ain't lighting the world on fire. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. What do you want out of this thing? Like one step, two step, we started going down that road, but what do you... What do you want it to be? Financial independence. What does that mean? I want to get to a point where I I have everything paid off that I need. Okay. House, car, okay. anything else I work for is just, you know. Do you have a house and a car now? What was that? Do you have a house and a car now? Uh, I don't own a house. Okay. Uh, yeah, rent and have a car. You're paying someone else's, yeah. paying someone else's mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's it going to take for you to get? So do you have an income goal at all? Well. Or did he throw out thirty and you were like, eh, sounds good, yes, but really no. Not really, no. You don't have one. I need to have one. Okay. It's hard to hit a target when you ain't got one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And again, there's no wrong answers. You can live how you want to live. There's some people that are okay making 70 grand and having the time freedom and don't, you know what I mean? Like it does, you don't have to want to want to make a million bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm just genuinely curious, you know, cause he challenged you and you're like, eh, it seems like you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Steak wasn't enough. Their martini, do you drink? Mar their martinis are bomb there. <laughs> oh my Lord. They have like 47 different kinds. The pineapple one is popular. Yeah, I didn't like it. But and the waitress, espresso. you know how she described it? She's like, it's like dirty feet. I'm like, 
she goes, that. she goes, I don't really like it. it What's weird is that made me order it. I'm like, well, let's try it. <laughs> I swear. It's like shit. You ought to try it. Yeah, it's really bad. I was like, that's a weird sales approach, but let's do it. I was intrigued, but we got like Reese's. There was a Reese's cup. There was a what else did we get, dude? Butterscotch. We got lemon drop. Which kind? Oh yeah, they it's like some kind of secret off menu magic one that we have learned was pomegranate. Nah, I don't like that. That's Neri's favorite. Yeah, I have to be pretty lit to drink that. But it's good food. It's good drinks. Um, yeah, dude. So it's like sometimes, like people hear numbers like this and they're like, "Yeah, I want to do it," but there's no real motivation to do it or the reason why, you know, and. Oh, what's up? Is this live? Yeah, it went here. What up, bro? Yeah, your boys there. What's going on? What's up? Or Freddy? Yeah, yeah Freddy. Freddy's on. I can't see. Who, do I know anyone else on there? Uh, oh yeah, what's up, Gio? What's going on, bro? All's was good. Um, you know, so I was like, I think for me, I had to learn why I wanted to get where I wanted to go versus where I wanted to go just verbally. You know, and for me, it became like, I was tired of telling my kids no for stuff. I mean, you don't have any, but like when I started working with Zach early on, Trowski, he wanted to be able to, when they had kids, have the kids live differently from the moment they were born. And I don't know if you know who he is or follow him or see any stuff, but he like takes his daughter on walks every single night. You know what I mean? He's not stressed out about money. They go do hiking stuff. You know what I mean? Like, he gets to do some really cool stuff. And his wife's doctor works crazy hours, so he gets to spend a lot of time alone with her. You know? And at, what's he, is he 30 yet? I don't even think he's 30 yet. He's like 20, what do I think? He was probably 22 when he started. He's probably 28, maybe. You know? But it's because he wanted to make sure she could go do her thing, be the doctor, not have to worry about paying for it. She could just do it because it was a dream, not because... They had they needed it to help pay the bills because his dad was a doctor but like when life hit them dad couldn't stop working because they needed the money to pay the bills you know what i mean and so his mom got sick and zach had to help he's like i don't want to live tied to what i do you know what i mean so he wanted to build something for that freedom of it all and be able to raise his kids differently than and he lived a good he was raised in a really good home you know what i mean like they lived well his dad was a doctor owned a practice but they didn't have the time and money. He just had the money, you know? And it's like, everybody has their own reasons for wanting to do things. Y'all just got to figure that out because that's what's going to motivate you to do stuff. You know, again, stuff like that sounds cool, but it's like, you already, the money doesn't motivate most of y'all, which is weird because you know you want living the way you want to live. I don't think anyone's confused at the basics of what it takes to sell more insurance, right? It takes more prospecting in order to present to more people. And you get more apps the more you present to people. The core of it's not that deep. But yet, how many of y'all were at the last one of these? I know you, I don't think y'all two were there. You were here. So, any of y'all financially significantly better off than you were at the last one yet? Cool, yeah. dope. A lot of times when I come back to these things, people are in the same spot. And maybe it's not a bad spot in life. Not the same spot. <laughs> Correct. It's like, you live good, but are you happy being in the same spot? I don't, I don't know the answer. Some people are, some people aren't. You know? And it's, there's, no, there's no right or wrong in any of this. You just got to figure out who you are and who you want to be in, in business and in life. And everybody's desires are wildly different. You know? So I think for me, once I understood the reasons why, you know, I know people that make like what you make and love it sell fucking eight out of 10 people and do it in their PJs and go to the beach and do things on the weekends and cool. You know, for me, I didn't, I didn't want to sell long. I didn't like it. It wasn't my favorite thing to do. I didn't love going to see clients. I did it because it made me money, but I wanted to build something because I wanted the time and money freedom. You know what I mean? I didn't want to, I watched the industry and I'm like, the downside of being really good and making a bunch of money as you get to a point, eventually your lifestyle changes. And now you have to sell to maintain the lifestyle. <laughs> I didn't want to be in that position. You know, 
I don't want to sell 40, 50, 60 grand a month to have to pay the big mortgage and the cars and the boats. You know what I mean? I didn't want that. I was like, I want to teach a bunch of people how to make a bunch of money and then run a company. That's what I wanted. You know, the selling was just a pathway to that for me. Um, but I understood why I wanted to do the things. So when I didn't really feel like doing it, <coughs> I still did it. <laughs> You know, and I still do that. I don't, there's a lot of this shit I don't want to do. You know, but I have goals and there's reasons why I do it. You know, so you just, it's like, if you really dig deep and go like, where am I at? Where do I want to go? And then there's this middle period. It's like, what am I willing to sacrifice to get there? And that's another choice you have to make. Some people aren't willing to sacrifice. They say, I want to make a million bucks. But the things they have to sacrifice to get there it's like, where's the importance for you? You just got to figure that out. And it can change with time, you know? So it's like, I see a lot of people say, I want to be here, but yet I want all the stuff I have, time. I want I want everything I got now. I want to watch Netflix and be at home and see all the things, which is, is cool. But then when you don't hit the income levels, there's some level of disappointment. You know what I mean? You don't feel like you're doing enough. So it's like, all right, why do you want it, dude? You know, just fig go down, go down a little deeper. Instead of just giving those vague ass answers, it's like selling. Like, why do you need the insurance? In case something happens. All right, here's the pricing. <laughs> you don't sell a lot of insurance when you do that shit. It's like you got to dig deeper and find out truly why, <clears throat> what things would look like, what problems are you solving to sell insurance. You're really good at that. Ask questions, ask really good questions, identify problems, solve the problem. You know, so that will motivate you to do more if you if what this is is solving problems in your world, or if it's just make selling apps, like that gets old. But if the selling apps is solving problems in your life, it's really easy to keep going when you don't feel like going. You know, and for me, the emotions went away with all that. Um, and that's what gets most of us stuck, especially early. You know, it's like all the no's. And he was talking about struggle. I struggled. And he said it as if it's past tense. And he didn't do it on purpose. Fair to say we still struggle today. Now, I ain't worried about paying my electric bill. <laughs> Does that make sense? But I still struggle with stuff. Mentally, physically, like, there is, there's different levels of financial struggle when you start making a bunch of money. You know what I mean? It's just different. Bigger problems. You mess something up. Dude, it gets expensive. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ooh, that one cost me some money. You know, so part of doing this, those that are newer, I feel like sometimes you think the struggle goes away eventually. The no's and the nay, all the things you hate about the business day in and day out, you'll know that will never go away. You just get better at dealing with it. You accept it. Same as the life struggles don't go away. Like we can all pretend they are, but life still hits you in the face every, every, all the time, every day. Maybe not every day, every minute, but you get the point. Like, you go like, oh, shit, how do I adapt and how do I deal with it? You know, and so many agents, I see the mistake they make is they do think like, maybe he sells a lot. He sells a lot. I don't know. I don't know. You've been around a while. I don't know how much you sell, to be honest, because I'm ignorant to a lot of it. But it's like, I know they sell a shit ton. Do you, I don't know. Where are you at sales-wise? You sell a bunch? Uh, 180 for the year so far. Yeah, fucking... Respectable as shit. I see people look at them and go like, oh, it's easy for them. I'm like, you hate chargebacks at this level? No. He's probably better at them, but he has significantly more chargebacks than you do, I bet. You know what I'm saying? Why? He sells more apps. You know? He deal. Dave deals with more shit. You go like, I have a few agents. Anybody hiring, recruiting? Anybody actually? I know y'all are. Y'all, anybody that? Just y'all two? Anybody want to eventually build? All of you? It can be hard. You have anybody tried it and be like, ooh, it's tough. Like get an agent or two and quit doing it. Get a hundred. Buckle the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just you deal with, the bigger you get, you deal with more of the stuff. And I always, I like, I try to explain that stuff to my youngest Maddox. He gets really frustrated. He plays sports, baseball and golf mostly now. And he gets really frustrated when he doesn't pitch perfect or if he strikes out 
or if he makes an error in the field or in golf, every swing he gets frustrated. Literally every swing he wants to like break his club. <sighs> yeah, right? But I'm like, do you watch the pros? The best of the best can't make that little fucking ball go exactly where they want every hit, every shot. Yet somehow when he plays, he still thinks that one day he's going to be so good that it's always going to go where he wants. And maybe no, everybody don't play golf in here, but I don't think anyone's confused by that. Baseball, he will strike out for the rest of time. Fair? He can make it to the majors. He'll have a bad day pitching for the rest of time. So it's like, it sounds kind of mean, but I'm like, bro, you just better get used to it. So I like when he's frustrated. I hate when he drags out the frustration for multiple hours or multiple days. And I hate even more that he thinks one day that's going to go away. The thing he's frustrated about. All that's going to happen is he's one day, one day is going to accept hitting three out of 10 times is really good. And failing seven out of 10 is just what it is. You know, and I've, that's what did really well for me as I started to understand, like, I'm trying to change the wrong things. I'm trying to change people giving me objections. I'm like, shit, if they gave no objections, everyone would do this shit. And then supply and demand says it wouldn't pay that well. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wish the leads were better. Do you? Imagine if every lead picked up and said, yes, I have a check waiting for you. I'll pay $842 a month. What would that do? What would the leads cost? <laughs> Does it make sense? I wish, I wish I had the CRM that could book them all for me. Do you? Like I know it's 99 bucks a, now, a month now for the CRM, but let that AI robot they promote be the magic. You know what that'll cost? It pays so well because certain people build up a skill set that's better than most and they're willing to get through those struggles. And that's why it pays really well. That's it. If it were as easy as we all wished, fucking carriers would do it without us. <laughs> you know what I mean? They pay us because they don't want to deal with the shit. That's the facts. Because they have tried, many of them have tried to do it on their own. Some of them have a retail division. You know what I mean? But it's like, yeah, he's somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, so I had to learn how to be appreciative that it was quote unquote hard. But I learned the only thing that was hard was the way I viewed it. I made it hard. Because at its core, what we do is really fucking easy. You just call people who are crazy as shit, who are inclined to be defensive and nervous and give you very generic objections. And your job is to study and train on the skill set side to learn how to overcome those things a certain percentage of time and accept that the shit ain't never going away, you know, and learn how to navigate it the right way. And for me, it, then it just became an activity game, you know, and those that have read and heard the story. I was just like, because everyone, what I've learned is everyone, if you go activity, am I spelling that right? And then you make money. Everyone has X amount of activity and you make X amount of money. Everyone has that. I just looked at this thing and went, how much do I make per activity? Right? I just looked at my deposits and I looked at my appointments or my phone calls. Those are the two main activities for me. And I went, every time I do one of these, I make X amount over here. And mine, I was making like early. I was making like 4K a month <clears throat> and I was doing like, I don't know, fucking, I don't know the exact number, like 350 phone calls a month. Yeah. Right. And I give the exact number. I have a, I literally have the spreadsheet where I did the math still to this day. So I can pull up this ballpark numbers and I was running maybe like 40 appointments a month. And I just went, all right, every time I do one of these. I made like, this number was 17 bucks. I don't know, there's a whole chapter in the book about it. 
And the first time I did the appointment one, it was like 250 bucks or something. Every time I booked one. So every time I made a phone call, I made this. Every time I booked an appointment, I made that. Just by looking at activity, money. And what this did for me is like all the noise in the middle, stuff you hate. What do we hate most? Tall carriers. Perfect. What else do you hate about the business? What sucks? The, the ringtone when you die. Perfect. Yeah. That's kind of calling. Yeah. Ringtones. Char objections. Objection. Perfect. Chargebacks. Right? No shows. Right? All the things. This factors all this in. Because this is after all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm making you giggle. No. I don't know if I said something stupid. So I just went, if this has all that factored in, why do I give a shit about all this? Why don't I just look at that? And then I always go, dude, imagine if, I always, I'd mess with people. And I'm like, anybody struggle dialing? Any y'all newer? Struggle making phone calls mentally because you get told no a lot. Or you just don't give a shit. You make a million a day. Nobody cares. No, I'm, I'm done. You keep going. Cool. When I go to a lot of places, I'm like, if people struggle, and as you're building, you start to do this. I've asked people if I paid you one dollar per dial, how many how many phone calls would you make a day? I just I pull out at the end of the day, I give you cash. Me that I could. Yeah. I'm like. For compensation. When I go. How about I'll give you a dollar per phone call and you give me the commission that's made from it? Yep. Why not? No, because it's mad. Yeah. Make a lot more on the commission. <laughs> it's mad. Right? But again, now most of y'all don't know what your number is. But if you just do basic, literally third grade math and figure it out, again, mine was, I was making no money. I was making four grand a month. But I realized every time I made a phone call, it was $17. And I sucked. And this was when my comp was like 40, 12 years ago. And I sucked. But I see people for a dollar a phone call would like do it 24 hours a day. I'm like, if you, do, if you figure out the math on what yours is, you'll throw up in your mouth at how good it is. This got to like an obnoxious, like their number's obnoxious. What it is. It's it's do y'all ever do it just for fun? You should do it one day just for fun. I just do SRS, so I have like one till I'll make fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's my point. Even you sell traditional stuff. Yeah. How many calls does it make you do Hall of Fame? Yeah. So call it ten K a week. What up y'all? Officially releasing my book. You can go on and order it now at johnwetmore.com or click the link below. That's where I go over the six basic principles I implemented to go from a struggling agent for my first couple years. Issuing nearly a half a million bucks a mall pen. Go through stories and examples and exercises that you can do to implement for yourself. Appreciate it. Again, johnwetmore.com. Get yours. Later. How many phone calls do you make a week? Roughly. I mean, Ballpark. 30 a day. How many days a week? Six. Because we got a dialer, so. Yeah. No, I don't care. Yeah, still. If you were calling. If I were calling, I'll make 250 phone calls a day. How many days a week? Six. Okay, so call it 1,000 phone calls a week? Yeah, 1,000 phone calls. So 10 grand. And more so, is necessary, but yeah. Yeah. Average. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, you, know, you go just do the math. Yeah. Per phone, I don't know, it's fucking 100 bucks a call, whatever the number is. You know what I mean? I just, I looked at this thing that way. And then as I just started building this thing. I literally just tricked people into looking at it differently. <clears throat> and remove the emotion has been by far the biggest thing I've done to build this thing. Because some people learn, they feel like they're not good at this yet. Like, yeah, maybe you see him and go, eh, I'm not as good. But when you start comparing activity, I've learned like the averages are almost really similar. You know, and go, every time you book an appointment, I sell this almost exclusively other than like rare case. He's on a far end because he sells a different product. But in this side, <coughs> traditional stuff, everyone's like per activity average is really similar. And I've done it in a way where we've looked at teams over time and gone the people at the bottom. A lot of times their average is higher than the people at the top of the leaderboards. They're actually better. 
they just don't have as much activity. And, I, and then I've messed with people and I've done math and I'm going like, your average times his activity, you would make this. And dude, I've seen that number be four, five, six, seven hundred thousand for agents that feel like they're not doing well. You know, um, so I just, again, for me, it's like, where do I want to go and why? In this, I was emotional as shit about this business. Like I couldn't just dial and be okay with it. I was, I would lose my mind. I mean, did anyone see me on the customer service call yesterday? Did anyone catch that? Reese, I was sitting in the kitchen. I might be pointing the wrong way. Wherever the hell the kitchen is. I had to call the post office and it's like, thanks for calling the post office. Press one for this, press two for that, press three for that. And I, had to, I, was, where was, I was on the phone for 15, 10 minutes. I don't know. It wasn't that long. <clears throat> I was losing my mind. Cause I'm like one. He's like, you press two. Please, no, no, I didn't. I said one. And then it was like, it kept having you do words, say yes or no. And I'd be like, yes, you said no, please confirm. I'm like, I said yes. And I'm yelling at the phone. And I have my head against the, I'm lean back. He, go on my social, it's on my stories now. Cause he took a picture of it or video of it actually. And it's got me losing my mind. Like, don't be a bitch. Yes. Don't be, I did see that. Yeah. Yes, I was literally <laughs> melting internally. He just happened to catch it live. But if I, was, if I knew I was making X amount of money every time I called, I'd be like, fuck, who cares what they say? Say no instead of yes 1,500 times. You know what I mean? So I have to learn how to control me. <clears throat> I'm emotional. I can be, my defaults kind of be to be negative. Look at things from a negative light. Like I thought they were trying to piss me off on purpose. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Someone cuts me off in traffic. I think they did it on purpose. You know what I mean? I'm where my wife is like, oh, they probably didn't see me. I agree, <clears throat> but I know me, you know, and you guys have to learn yourselves. And one of the things that I did was I, I was, I was emotional and I always put blame elsewhere because it was easy and it validated why I wasn't having success for me, <clears throat> you know, and learning that I had to make those changes made this business really simple, you know, and it just became from their reps. And then I was like, all right, I want to get out. Here's why. All right, cool. I want to make. 10K a week, or 10K a week. All right, how many do I have to do? I just did the math and I reverse engineered it. And I'm like, oh, that ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> and so I just upped my stuff. And we still do the same concept to this day. Everything we do in my office, we still track. We use a lot of CRMs, we use a lot of automation, but even recruits, things, all, I've tracked all that. And so then we can look at it and go, all right, here's our end result. Here's how much we did on the front end. How do we get this higher? We move this higher. I literally just live by the shit. We do it all the time in the office. I'm like, track everything. Why? I don't know. We'll look at it in a couple months, see what it looks like. I don't, I don't track it and look at it on a Tuesday and be like, oh, my average today. Who cares today? Day by day, this doesn't really work that well. But over the course of time, you're not really going to move averages a ton. You know, and it just gave me a very different insight. And by far, it's helped the most in the building. Um, the whole book's about it, the, the concept of it. And that's what's allowed us to get to that level of um, production. And then for me, it was like, all right, let me do the stuff I'm training on. Let me do the hard shit. So you want to build, you know how emotional they're going to be. Oh my God. <laughs> so I had to learn how to kind of be the, the face of what I was saying, you know, and I can talk about it from all angles. Cause I was new and broke and calling old leads. And, you know, some people they want to build, but they only want to call the premier stuff. And I'm like, well, how the hell are you going to teach the new guy that has no money? You know, one of the best things I ever did, <coughs> I'm sorry for the cough. I have like, like terrible bronchitis still. I have like a month. Um, I was out of the field <coughs> for like two years and there's some equivalent of this today, still always, there will always be change in the industry, you know? So if you think you found the magic right now, I promise you in a year or two, it's going to be different in some form or fashion, something's going to be different. So learn how to kind of keep your head on a swivel and adapt is the best skill you could have. Um, but at one point when Facebook leads were new, <coughs> everyone was crying about them, how bad they sucked. Now that's all everybody, you know what I mean? Like everybody's running them. But when it was new early 2019, everyone was bitching. And I would be like, really? Like, don't be a bitch. That was my thing. <laughs> but everyone, then people would go, well, you don't know, you don't do it. So I 
I literally, after a couple comments like that, I got back in the field, started picking up my phone, calling what they were calling, sold like 30 grand in a few weeks. And no one could then go, well, you don't know what it feels like. You know, so sometimes the danger, and I love that you have a dialer. Sometimes the danger of it is people look at it and go, that's why he's winning. Oh. Now, you have the experience of making phone calls and making money. So it doesn't necessarily happen that way because I'm a big fan of eventually not doing the work either. Um, but as, as things start to change, just learning how to do those things so you can understand what people feel, feel like going through it and learn how to speak on it is invaluable. And when we did that 2019, we were talking about it yesterday with someone, um, our team production tripled that year solely because I went out for three weeks and did what people were struggling with, you know, just to prove it. And then it was like, oh shit, he did it. Like he, I, it was funny. They were going, he came out of retirement and sold, <laughs> you know? So sometimes it's like, what are they struggling with? Are we doing that just to prove that it works so you can teach on it? You know? Um, questions y'all have anything you want me to touch on specifically you know, like, sure. uh, have a, a certain amount of agents who like they say they have no money to fund their first lead investment yeah what do you do <laughs> what do you do well i, I get a lead do you yeah. anyone that's struggling to fund their well i have an agent who's got to work at this right so not all of them not all of them got it so I'll rewind even further than that and go, what's that conversation look like during the interview process? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Meaning I don't wait till they're an agent to find out they got no money. Right. So do you know the person or not know them? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know someone that's different. I'm a big fan of like giving people a shot, but at the same time, If someone's broke, does he have a job? Yeah, so he works from like uh, 4.30 in the morning till two o'clock and then he comes and helps him. Yeah. He's really brand new. Yeah. I'm all about helping a guy like that. But you get someone that's new and they're broke and they don't have a job, I'm not your guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just don't understand how you can be broke and not work yeah. and then look to me to fund it. Mm -hmm. I find it weird. That's called welfare. I don't do that. And I grew up on it, to be clear. <laughs> but it doesn't work for me. You know what I mean? So for me, if I rewind, and I've had it a lot, people get into it and they got no money. And I'm like, so you, you want to get in the business, you understand you need leads, but you have no money. They go, yes. I go, how did you expect this to work? And I'll let them talk. I want to hear what they have to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I challenge them to go, I expect you to pay for me, they just won't. You know what I mean? So 99% of them, I'm never even gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get off the phone. I won't even finish the interview. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, now, you get a guy that's like, dude, I've been serving in the military, I got three kids I'm doing over here, I did all this work, I'm, dude, I'm willing to do whatever. I got 52 bucks to my name, I'll go to work. Dude, I'll just give them lead. You know what I mean? Like, so, you have so many leads. So for me then it's, I'll challenge them to put in work. I don't give a shit if you can print out leads from four years ago. I just want to see if they pick up the phone and call. So uh, will you, if I help you, will you call them? Yep. Here's a stack. Do you make him do like a report to you? Oh, hell yeah, dude. 100%. I make everyone still to this day report to me stuff. I do it every day. Every single person I speak to that I'm helping, I give them something to do, and I, it's their responsibility to get back to me. Every conversation I have. Because I want to see if they're coachable, dude. And do the shit they say they're going to do. I literally just did it. I was on a, you saw me on, in there on the computer. I was working with an agent and she's like trying to figure it out. So I'm like, all right, cool. Do you track your numbers? Nope. Do you know how many, and all these questions, she didn't know anything, but at the, at the end, at the course, she didn't track anything yet. Not because she's mean, she just doesn't. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't know how to help you if I don't know what we're working with. I don't know if you make 12 phone calls or 400. I don't know the answer. So I don't know what's wrong. So I said, do me this, track your dials today. Here's how many phone calls you should, and I break down how many they should make per hour. So I set expectations. You know what I mean? It takes a minute of phone call, 60 an hour. So if you're going to dial for four hours, you should have at least 200 phone calls. If you're going to dial for eight, you know what I mean? Two, four, six. So I, I just set expectations. And I'm like, hey, when you're done, just shoot me a text with your activity tracker. And I'll look at them. If at the end, and I get them 
say how many hours they wanted to work on the phone. And I just, how many phone calls, you know how many phone calls someone can do in a period of time. Yeah. So I'm like, if you, all right, I can do four hours. Cool. All right, you should have two to 300 phone calls in that. Text me the information. We'll look at it. I'm going to see how many picked up, how many you booked, and that'll let me know what to tweak. You have them track the, the objections they get on the phone? A little. I'm not, I don't get too deep. I'm like, just, just calls, uh, contacts, and, and appointments. And I'm just like, just do this. You know what I mean? Just do that every time you get one. Just send me a screenshot. Don't think too much about it because it's not that important. Again, just like I told you, tracking numbers today doesn't mean a ton. It's literally exercise. This matters over the next three months. It doesn't really matter today other than it's straight up a challenge, dude. I'm testing them. Do you track just setting the appointment or are they trying to one call close? I don't get that deep, dude. If they're, if they're one call close and I go, cool, count a presentation as an appointment. What do I count? Dude, if they hung up on you in three minutes, count it if you want to feel good. Like, you're an adult. Like, you know what to count what not to count. You know what I mean? If you want to... Correct. Yeah, I just... I, I don't get... It's more about... Will they be coachable? Will they listen? Yeah. That, that will they do what... I just want to know that. You know? It's crazy how many people I tell to do this really simple exercise that won't do it. They're like, yes, I'll do it. I'm like, all right. So this girl, I said, text me tonight, 9 o'clock, shoot me a text. Just a screenshot. And then I'll tell you what to do next. We'll go over it. Don't worry about it. Just send me a screenshot. I do that, I don't know, a handful of times a week. 75% won't send it to me. So what do you, you have top of those? Huh? What do you do with those 75%? I just find new people. <laughs> they can never bitch to me again. I'm nice to them. High five. Cool. <gasps> Rough day. What? <laughs> and, but I'm clear. I'm like, I'm challenging you to see if you'll do it. If you do it, we'll keep working. If you don't do it, we don't have to keep working together. How do I do A, B, and C? Start here. I'll give you all the other stuff later. You know what I mean? So it's always about, I just want to see if they're just willing to follow process. You know what I mean? And I'm going to teach them the process, the things that matter. And everyone should know their numbers. I just find it weird that people do this and they don't have a effing clue what their numbers are like. How much you make last month? I don't know. How many phone calls you make? I don't know. How many leads you buy? I don't know. What? I don't know how to function that way. You know what I mean? I just, I don't, no company, no, on the planet functions that way. Yeah. You know? Have you found that if you do ever, I'm sure you've tried this, um, if you do ever fund their leads, <coughs> that there's no sense of urgency? Yeah. To it so forget, again, it's for me, I already know if they're willing to do stuff. Because I've done this concept from the minute I start talking to them. Think about all the things that happened before this with an agent. All the shit they got to do to get started. Mm -hmm. I've done this test in some form or fashion the entire time. As simple as register for class. Hey, I'm going to send you the message. You can register for Excel or whatever y'all use today. Okay, any reason you can't do it tonight? No, I can do it tonight. All right, cool. Do me a favor. As soon as you register, shoot me a text. Let me know. If you don't, I'll assume you quit. I've just done versions of that. Hey, can you send Amanda whatever? license, whatever the shit y'all collect is. You know what I mean? The ID, get them started, all that stuff. Can you send it to Amanda? Yep. Hey, as soon as you send it to her, shoot me a text so I know. Everything I do, do this, let me know. 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 Everything. Because then I don't have to follow up with anybody. I put all the follow up on people. I don't want to remember that shit. It's too much for me. You know what I mean? And I know statistically, people are just going to naturally fall off on themselves. And then they just weed themselves out, right? And it's very hard for people to go, John didn't give me support. John didn't do this. Because that's what I used to get. Well, they will anyway. They won't with me, bro. They'll still blame it. <laughs> they won't with me, dude. I don't get no... They, now, they say John's mean. John's <laughs> mean. <laughs> but I tell them that up front. You know what I mean? I just tell people, dude, most people will quit on themselves. Most people won't put in the work. They will not do... I will tell you exactly what to do. Most people are not going to do it. I don't know you from a hole in the wall. I, record, I say this verbatim. I don't know you. What will the average be? How much can I make? What, I, dude, I don't know you at all. I don't know if you suck with people or you're good with people. I don't know if you're going to follow up or not follow up. I don't know if you're going to pull policies out or not pull policies out. I don't know if you're going to ask for referrals or not. I don't know if you're going to ask if they have anything that acts like insurance or not. I don't know if you're going to get on the trainings or not. 
I don't know if you're going to pay attention when you get on the trainings. I don't know if you're going to study your career. I don't know if you're going to learn product. I have no idea anything about you. So I can't tell you what it might be like for you. All I can say is if you follow the process I give you, you have a really high likelihood of having success because I've done this a lot. You know what I mean? So I'm challenging them from the rip activity and learn this thing. Like it's going to take time to learn what we do. You know, I'm not the guy that's like, you can go in and make 12 phone calls and make, I'm, I'm not that guy, dude. You know what I mean? I'm challenging people to understand that this is going to be a journey. You know, again, Zach's wife, medical school, hell, she's literally been going through it since I've known them. She's officially a doctor now, but she's in, what do you call that? Residency? Is that the right word? Where you're like a doctor, but you still make no money? She's in that now. So she's almost there. But I've known them seven, eight years. She's been doing it the entire time. Imagine if she expected to be like performing surgery or whatever she's going to do in four months. It'd be weird. She expected it to be hard. She expected to work crazy hours and shifts change. And you know what I mean? Like that was the expectation. <coughs> Can doctors make good money? Yeah. Is it the most complicated thing on earth to learn? No, but you got to go through that process. And I just make this note different, you know, and it's a lot quicker, but if they aren't willing to go through that journey of struggle, tweak, get better, struggle, tweak, get better. You know, and I'm just really honest, dude. I can't, <laughs> I can't tweak anything if you don't give me activity. You know what I mean? If you make, if you talk to six people this week, you think I'm that good? <laughs> you want me to improve your sales when you talk to six people a week? I, I don't know how to do that. You know, so I'm just, I'm really open about it, dude. And that doesn't excite everyone, but I don't give a shit. There's so many people out there. That's, you know what I mean? I know it works all the time. Everyone in here, if you make more phone calls this month by double what you did last month, you will have a really high likelihood of making double the money. You have almost zero chance of being twice as good at sales this month as you were last month. Fair? I'm like, why do we keep trying to get better at the sales so much? So like incrementally so much. We want to get 10x better at it. I'm like, oh, I ain't mad at it. But why do you think it's going to happen this week? <laughs> you think you're going to watch a phone script video and be 3x better at phone? You think you're going to get a script from someone that's going to make you magically better? <sighs> By, can you book a few more? Sure. Should you study it? Yes. But almost exclusively, dude. Agents that are struggling, they ain't working enough. So I just took that angle, you know, and I'm like, just be okay with it if you don't work enough and understand it's going to be inconsistent and suck forever. That will never go away. If you don't see a fuck ton of people, this will be inconsistent and suck forever. Unless you're an outlier. You're an outlier, dude. You know that though. And it's not, it doesn't make you weird. In some aspects, it makes you really fucking smart. <laughs> I'm good at weird. But it's, I'm weird too. But it's not very duplicatable. It's hard to teach that. I want to hear her story. Yeah. I ain't mad at it. She'll get it. Not that it can't be done. Yeah. She has a full time career. Yeah. She, with Ulta Beauty, manages 27 stores in five states. Yeah. She has a very demanding career. Yep. I've been, we've been friends since college. I've been trying to hire her for two years. I was at her house one day and she goes, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And my first thought, I was going to share this later, but she's 80% deaf. She has hearing aids. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, one, can she do phone sales? I'm not going to tell her she can't do it based off of any disability. I'm yeah. trying to limit her. I'm going to give her a shot. 100%. We're buddies. I'm not going to tell her no. Yeah. So I thought, what you did? I didn't go through a detail. I just said, all right, get your license, Hello. then we can talk. Yeah. Surprise the shit out of me when she calls me two weeks later. Okay, now Got it. I, yeah. I was like, damn, all right. So um, she doesn't have a lot of time mm -hmm. to put into dials and stuff. So I just started straight off teaching her SRS. Yeah. So that's really all she knows. Yeah. So she made I love it. $65,000 last year mm -hmm. working about an hour a day, two hours a day. Mm -hmm. 
exists. So it exists. So the conversation on the way here, she's frustrated with her corporate. Yeah. Career. And I said, so how, how many hours do you work a day? She's like, two. What'd you make last year? She's like, almost 70. I said, so does yeah. it make That's sense? That's roll. Again, same concept. You put more hours, time into that. You know what I mean? Now, as you know, not everybody's built for those conversations. And you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I was willing to go like, dude, I want to teach this at scale. And I didn't sell that stuff. I mean, I tripped over some annuities. I never sold an IUL in my career. You know what I mean? Not that that was the best path necessarily. But everything I do out, me, I just want to make sure it's extremely duplicatable. Now, I know people that have agents, agencies with 10 people and they print money. <laughs> it does exist. You can make money in any style of this. There's no right or wrong. What I'm saying isn't right over his, it's that it all works. You just get to decide who you want to be in the business, you know? And for me, I was like, I'm going to teach simple. You know what I mean? I made money simple. I learned it by this. So I'm going to find people that fit this mold and work for me. Most people don't want to deal with the amount of people I dealt with. That works really well. You just got to be, be that really well. You know, and, um, you know, I just decided I wanted to teach this thing at scale and make it really big and not have to continue to sell, you know, um, it's just my path. Again, it doesn't make it right or wrong, but anything else y'all specifics that I can help with? Don't be what, shy. What point of the... You can take them all. I like this. He's like, fuck them. I'm asking all the questions. <laughs> At what point of the recruiting call do you let them know they have to fund their own lead source or like you ask them about income or whatever. First 30 like, seconds. First yeah. I mean, for me, every recruiting call I've ever done, they had access to watch a video in advance that explains who we are, what we do and what we're looking for. Five, six, seven minutes. Everybody probably has access to Sean's or someone else's. I made my own with time, yeah. but just a brief summary of what this is. So if I was going <coughs> to set up a call with someone, I'm like, hey, before the call, watch this. It answers most of the basic questions, and we're going to talk about it when we talk. And my first question, like, hey, Mel, yeah. did you get to watch the video? You know how many people say no? A lot. I'm out. Hang up. That's this. Yeah. <laughs> watch the video, and we're talking about it. I didn't watch it. Got to go. Why? Dude, I'm not explaining it. Like, that means you ain't going to do anything else I ask you to do. It means you're going to be the guy that can't find the email that the carrier sends you with your agent number. And you're going to bug the shit out of me. I'm not dealing with that. I'm off. If they did watch it, cool. What did you like most about it? What intrigued you? Why do you think this is a fit for you? I just want to hear them talk. Because I want to see if they're going to give me some bullshit surface answer or if they actually watched it. Because you'll be able to tell. <sighs> like, vague answers. I mean, he was giving me surface level answers earlier. Eh, it just seems like a really good opportunity. <sighs> I mean, just helping people is what I do. I just, and I feel like I can help people in this. What about the industry made it right for you? What about the video exactly, specifically? And I just want to, again, I want, I want that the, they absorbed it, you know? <coughs> um, and then from there, I'm like, did you understand leads? 10 out of 9, commission only. If they don't understand and okay with those three things, I'm out. And I ask those things first. Yeah, I watched the video, man. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about, you know, how the compensation work? And, you know, there were some leads. Can you kind of explain what leads cost? Yeah, dude, great questions. Do you mind if I ask you some questions first so I can see if this is even a good fit? And I flip it right away. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Everyone says no problem. And I start asking myself. <coughs> you know, and I want to make sure they're built for what they're about to go through. I ain't explaining all this without them explaining to me why I should even continue the conversation. And what I've always told people is my strategy when I'm having those calls is not to find people to hire. That's not my strategy when I'm talking to someone. I'm not looking to bring them on board. I'm looking for a way to get off the phone as fast as possible. I want to find the red flag now. So all my questions are designed for that. You know what I mean? I don't want it to be vague. I don't want it to be like, so who is this again? Dude, I'm out. <laughs> You know what I mean? You get the guy like, hey, dude, calling you back. You set up the interview. Hello. Dude, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. You know what I mean? So you just got to set your own boundaries for who you want. I just, I know what I didn't want to deal with. 
<clears throat> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, um, it's asking a lot of questions, dude. Like I grill them. All the stuff you hate about agents. I'm asking them all that stuff up front. You know, my favorite question to ask people in the interview, when we start talking about leads, yeah, they understand it. I'm like, cool, figure out budget, figure out if they got money, if they're not, you know what I mean? If they weird about it, I'm like, dude, can you, are you worried about your mortgage coming up this month? Like if you didn't make a sale, would you be stressed out about paying your bills? Do you have six months of money sitting in a bank account? They'll tell you yes or no, you know? Um, but once I figure out leads, I'm like, all right, if, if you're willing to invest in leads, if you put 500 bucks, thousand bucks, whatever into leads the first week and say you get 30, 40, 50 leads, whatever it is, and the first 30 tell you to fuck off. How are you going to handle that? That's not on an interview, dude. The ones that go, can that happen? I'm like, no, no, bud. That's going to happen. <laughs> How are you going to handle it? What am I looking for there? What do I want the answer to be? Rhino skin. Huh? Rhino skin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just I see what I figure out what I'm doing wrong, ready to reinvest. I'm looking for those types of answers. I'm not looking for like, oh, can I just try it out and see how it works? <laughs> Y'all ever hired that guy? Yeah. I have. Yes. Yeah. What? Here. What do you mean you're going to try it out and see how it works? You know what's the, the insurance industry, bro? You know you drive downtown and you see all those big buildings? What do you mean see if it works? You're confused if the insurance industry works right now? And you want me to buy that load of shit? I, I'm out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't let the surface level stuff... When you do that, you're just like the new sales guy that misses all the stuff in the house. When they've told you 82 times they want to think about it, and at the end they finally have to say, I want to think about it, but they've given you all the hints along the way, and they miss it. It's the same thing, dude. You know? So I'm just, I'm slowing down and continuing to ask really direct questions. Based on what? All the mistakes I've made hiring people, like the objections you get, right? You, you cater your presentation, your in-home, the way you set expectations, based on the shit you get at the end. And we're trying to avoid it. That's why you say what you say on the phone. To avoid them going, I already got it taken care of. I'm good. I was just checking on the pricing. You're trying to avoid all that shit. And when you get in the sales presentation, you're trying to avoid, let me talk to my husband. Let me think about it. We don't do anything on the first time. You're trying to avoid all that stuff. So you tailor your, your questions, your expectations to avoid that. So everything I'm doing on the recruiting process, the hiring process, the getting them started process is to avoid all the shit that we deal with. I don't want to get there, dude. I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to get the phone call that says, I mean, I just, I ain't got money for leads this week and my bills are due and I'm going to have to get a job. I don't want, I, three months in, I couldn't figure out how to overcome that up here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Char, I mean, Oh, these Pauls, they just cancel. And, and I mean, the carrier and, uh, and all the shit they say. Dude, I talk to someone like, yo, you better expect that three out of 10 are going to cancel off the rip. And if you only sell three ops a week, those are the three that are going to cancel. <laughs> yeah. Every person I talk to, I tell them that. Wait, what? No, if you only sell three policies a week, I promise those three are going to cancel. It's the universe fucking with you. It's the laws of insurance. Is it true 100% of the time? No, but I want them to understand activity. You sell three a week, I'm nervous. Why? Dude, the chances of you having consistent money is like zero. Fair? <laughs> Why hide that? This, there's like not a real in-between in this business. It's hard to kind of be in that middle ground. You're either broke or you're fucking rich. The in-between sucks ass. You know what I mean? It's like, the agent's just like, what does the average agent do? You ever answer that? No, it depends on the person. My answer? The average agent quits. Is that what you want to be? Isn't that the truth? Doesn't the average agent quit? <laughs> Correct. I'm like, is that what you want? You want to be average? On the interview, dude, I'm challenging people. Stop process. And it's not a lie. 
The average agent does $7,327 a month in my agency based on buying 42 leads a week at $7 a week. I'm like, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> I tell them all leads suck. They do. I say, just I'm like, where do I buy leads? I'm like, it doesn't matter. They all suck. Yeah. They're like, what? I'm like, yeah, you're going to call 100 a day. 90 of them are going to be wrong numbers, hang up on you, cuss you out. Yeah. 10 are going to answer. One or two are low hanging fruit. As you get better, you'll convert the rest. I said, imagine a dog ate a diamond ring. It's going to shit out a big old pile. You're going to dig through it. There's a diamond in there somewhere. Start calling. Yeah. <laughs> That's accurate. a good analogy. Yeah. I've been telling people lately. Oh, I started saying it out of nowhere. I wish I've said it longer. <clears throat> Someone sent me a DM and they're like, I want some high, and they put like, I want some high quality leads. And they typed the email like, <whistles> like that with high, all caps quality it was in the message. Where do I find quality leads? And I'm like, oh Lord, I, it drives me nuts when people do that. Yeah. And I was like, my response to him, which I liked was like, the quality of leads is only as good as like the quality of your skill set and your mindset towards those leads. Because it takes one victory call for their mindset to change. So it's saying what you're saying in like one sentence now. I'm like, and it gets them thinking. I got to train, I got to get better, I got to call, you know what I mean? Like it just, I was like, oh, I like that answer. So I've changed the way I've said it just recently, literally like last week, two weeks ago. And people's perspective on it's like, oh, well, that makes sense. Oh, you mean I got to get better? You think? <laughs> yes, you got to get better. Yeah. So, makes sense? Yeah. Go like this. Anybody else have a question? I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, they missed it. So, I've heard you they say did. Times that you did this for several years at like a very mediocre level, mm -hmm. and then there was at some point where like mm -hmm. something changed and you just flipped, flipped the switch. <coughs> yeah. What or why did it change, mm -hmm. and what actionable steps did you take? What page is it on? From mediocre <laughs> to I'm kidding. Page <laughs> nah. Um, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, dude. I um, just life events happened. You know, I got a lot of kids, four from a previous marriage, and. I owed a bunch of money and then I owed more money, uh, like a, <coughs> a deferred alimony came due and I was pissed about it. It was a thousand bucks a month and I was pissed. Meaning like if I gave any one of you a thousand dollar monthly bill right now, would it affect the way you think? Like would that impact you? A new thousand dollar a month bill. So I was, I was mad. <coughs> And my mentor came, I was losing my shit on the dial bay, is what happened. Like I told you earlier, I'm, I'm emotional, I'm negative, I was losing my shit. Dude comes over and he's like, bro, what are you doing? Because I was making a lot of noise. Shit was hitting the floor somehow. And he's like, so I explained to him. And he goes, are you really losing your mind over one application a month? He walked away. That's good. I was like, huh, motherfucker. That was sneaky. <laughs> and then I kind of, I got really upset with how upset I was over something so simple. That was in my control completely. You know? And for me, I looked and I went, never again in my life am I going to worry about $1,000 a month. And I knew this stuff loosely. I kind of knew my numbers. You know, I was in the business for a couple of years. I just didn't really take ownership that I had control of this. I was still blaming lead types and underwriting from carriers and upline. Not, you know what I mean? I was still blameful of stuff because I wanted this to be so good and so high quality that this number would go up. I wanted the better lead. I wanted a better close rate. I wanted a better script. I wanted this. I wanted to keep this the same and make that go up. That was the mentality. And when it wasn't, I found other people to be the reason why it wasn't. Right, your work ethic to stay the same just to have yeah. Yeah. results from yeah. the same work ethic. Hence the name of the book, yeah. Do More Now and Get Better Later.
I just stopped giving a shit about getting better. I just accept that I am who I am. My close ratio is what it is. The leads are what they are. The business is what it is. The clients are who they are. I just, fuck it, dude. What if I just go at it different? What if I just take a different approach? Mentally. And it was so freeing. So I can triple my income if I triple my activity. I wish someone fucking told me this earlier. I was so mad that I overcomplicated it. You know, and I let emotions and analytical side, I let all that get in the way. And I was like, F it, let's go to work. And dude, literally that day, everything changed. Because I was able to increase this at will. I just turned it on. <laughs> as easy as you could turn on and off these lights. You could all change this level. You could do more recruiting calls today. You could make more phone calls today. You could buy more leads today. You can, you can all turn this on right now. And that was the decision, decision I made, dude. Because I didn't want to be pissed. I just, and my personality type is like, fuck it, just pay it. I'll figure it out. Just pay it. I just, I don't want the noise. I don't want to worry about it. I just child support, alimony, tuition, kids need shit. I'm like, just pay it. This bill over here, just pay it. Just who cares? Just fucking pay it. You know, I'll just figure it out. We just sold our house. We're moving into our new house Saturday. Someone makes an offer and we live in a really nice neighborhood now, but I live in a neighborhood and I'm buying a house. It's on 12 acres and it's a nice size fucking house and I don't have neighbors because I don't like people. <laughs> <coughs> But the neighborhood I'm in is like a desired neighborhood for people that like neighborhoods. And our house is not, it doesn't suck now, but it's not what we wanted. So I list it where I think <laughs> we should get it for. Someone made a <coughs> lowball offer. <coughs> they offered me like 200 grand less. Yeah, I had it listed at 1.6, they offered me a 1.4. And I'm like, fuck them, bah, bah. tell them no. Bah. They were like, all right, we'll just buy another house. So I went, fuck it, just accept it. I just wanna move on. So with no thought, 30 seconds, I'm like, fuck it, take 200 grand less. And let me just move on. Could I have held out for more money? Dude, it's in the most desirable neighborhood in our area. But I, I just don't give a shit. I just, I, I, want, I want to not have to think a lot. I want to not have to worry about, I'll just make it up. I will make it down the road. I just, I'll make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't care. And it solved other problems. You know what I mean? I'm able to move sooner. I'm able to get stuff off my plate. I'm able to move money. I just was like, I was like, fuck it. And most people are like, just hold out, make a count, do that. I'm like, yeah, just let's, can we move on? You know, so my personality type thrives when I cannot think so much. Because if I start thinking, it's, it's a wrap, dude, it's not good. Amanda tells me 15 times a week I'm overthinking about something. She's like, you overthinking? Yes, sorry. Yes, I am. It's who I am. So I thrive in that. Just go like, and move on. And so I literally went from, we were doing in-home at the time. It was all in-home sales. The concept works no matter what. I was doing eight, 10 appointments a week. I went to 30 the next day. That's it. And that year, that was in March of 2015. I'd done nothing in January, February, March. I did 460 grand that year, paid on my own pen from one choice. Did almost 400 the next year, and there was like two something, whatever it was. The next two and a half years was 1.2 million on my own pen, basically putting the account because the comp was what it was. So I made a million bucks on my own pen from one decision. You know what I mean? And it was a very simple decision. It took me three seconds to make, and I turned it on. I didn't have to think about nothing else. Same person, same script, same phone call, same leads. Everything, everything was the same, <laughs> except the decision and the activity. You know. And then what I found out that I didn't know about, I got really fucking good. Because I was still training and studying, and I saw so many. There were so many reps. It's like, oh, all the objections are the same. So when they say this, I just have to say this instead, and it navigates. But you know what I mean? And my give a shit level was zero. Because I was the 30 people a week versus eight. Someone's buying. I'm not, I was never confused by that. I could I, get me to sell anything today. 
I will see more people than you and I will sell more. Will my close ratio be as good? No, dude, it was 40%. My close ratio is 40%, dude. Now, did I present for them all? You give me 10, I'm getting four apps. How many I do full presentations with? Probably five. Because the other five I bail on because they're giving me all the bullshit along the way. I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. I ain't giving you pricing. Nah, you're giving me weird answers. I'm out. Well, how much is it? You're telling me you don't give a shit is what I hear. <laughs> you want me to arm wrestle you to take care of your family? I'm out. And I would just leave. Why? Because I'm just going to get to the people who are going to take care of their family. You know? And did other people sell ones I walked out on behind? Yes. I just didn't care. Mentally, it was so freeing for me to just go and go and go. And I was able to teach it real easy. There's nothing complicated about what I'm saying to y'all. Fair? Yeah. Most of y'all will not do it. Most of you will not make that change. Which I find weird as shit because it's easy. I will challenge you. Most of y'all will not fucking do it. <laughs> I've been doing this for 10 years. 95% of people I tell this to don't do it. Well, yeah. You can read my mind. Um, so my question was going to be, you have an agent, um, uh, let's say he's been to every convention, yeah. every Ignite, every speed, every training for <coughs> years, and mm -hmm. he still hasn't done shit. He's, he's, written, he's taking up pages of notes. I got he's one rule. What is it, Amanda? The last one. One rule. If they do all the, if they go to every, he said they go to every training and they just don't change. They're doing everything. They just won't make the change to do more activity. That is one I will do. But if you're going to stay here and not work a lot, remember what it is? Reese, you got to know it. You watch all my videos. You don't know. You don't know. If they stay here, and they stay mediocre. That's it. You just can't complain to me. I just don't give a shit if you're gonna be mediocre. Cool. No complaining rule. Why? It's going to be inconsistent and suck forever. So if you choose that door, like that door over there, it's a lot of work, it's high activity, you'll get better with time, you get rich in that door. This one is stay the same exactly what you're doing. It'll be inconsistent and suck forever. If I said you all stand up and walk in which door you want. But if you go over here, you can never complain to me. Dude, every day of my life, people stand up and walk in that door. Every day of my life. I, you chose it. I will watch you drown. I just will. Why? Dude, you know how much energy it is to deal with? So I just put complete clarity out there that it's going to be inconsistent suck forever. Hey, this week, dude, did you just call me to complain? I mean, I just, bro, I think you called the wrong person. I gotta go. <laughs> that conversation has happened hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. And they go, I know, I just, hey, what about, Dude, are you, are you looking for a different answer than I gave you last time? I ask that all the time. The lead said that, da, 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 the lead, da, da, da. Are you looking for a different answer this time? They'll stop. So it's just a hard, it's like a boundary, man. You know what I mean? So I don't care if you stay mediocre at all. Just, why do you expect it to change? You know? And if you're the weirdo, that can figure out how to triple your income with no more activity because you got really good watching a video, I'm the first one to give you a high five. But I ain't training on that shit. Because <laughs> I know it don't work most of the time. You know? It's like, I like what works a lot. I like what's duplicatable. I like what's easy to do. And to stand up and walk out that door is really easy to do. But most somehow go that way, dude. And it's, I've learned to be okay with it. You just don't, don't Not bitch. Years caring too much about their paycheck than they do. Yeah, it's exhausting. And what I, what changed it for me? I don't know when I'm supposed to stop, Dave. So just kick me out anytime. Um, I'm probably taking up some carriers thing. I'm sure. Um, when I learned that me going out this door and chasing people 
made me lose people that were standing right there, dying to get in that door, it was a wrap for me. Me dealing with the negativity and the bitching and the unwillingness to change drains my mental energy. We all got a tank. You drain my tank, I don't have enough energy for her. When I realize that correlation, you're not going to cause her to not be able to win through me. No chance that's happening. So I just, I've had to watch good people, bro, that I'm really close to. I became friends with, you know what I mean? Like people I was tight with. It's hard to make that change. I'm, I'm 50, 60 agents in when I realize this. I got a ton of people and I'm trying to drag everyone to the <coughs> next level. <coughs> Making that change. It wasn't quite as like instant. That sort of developed over time. I had to kind of learn how to navigate that. But there were people I was really tight with that I had to literally watch bleed out right there in front of me. And I had to learn how to some, sadly, be unemotional about it. So I'm like, I can't, I mean, if you're not willing to, like, there's only so much I can do for someone else. You know, and that, that was a hard part of the business. You kind of lose some relationships sometimes with it. But I've gained so many valuable ones. You know what I mean? And the people who make the change and are willing to do it, how appreciative they are, I fucking love that, dude. The people that make the change. You know what I mean? I work with a guy. I work with two different people, dude. Worked with one guy last month. He went from seven grand to 43 grand in 30 days. He did everything I asked him to do. It was a magic. I just gave him the steps. He followed them. We're with another girl right by his side. Went backwards. Why? She didn't do the steps. I just don't give a shit. I just find more like him, you know, or people that accept mediocre and don't complain. We have a, we're stacked with people like that. We have a fucking thousand of them a month or more. You know what I mean? It's five, six, seven million dollars a month in volume from that, where I used to make them quit. So now I'm like, you can stay, just don't complain. They, that volume adds up too. <laughs> you know, we do significantly more volume through that avenue than we do the one, the winners. Just being real, significantly mediocre. more volume. Hunter, I've got below mediocre and complain all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that's the change that needs to be made. You know what I mean? Make sense? Yeah. How, how do you decide what carriers to use and what do you want from? That was a question. <laughs> um, I mean, that's evolved over time. <clears throat> when I got started, y'all wouldn't contract us. <laughs> so I used, the, I used the one that would. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Today, um, I mean, easy is preferable. Easy to work with, easy to communicate with, easy to get approval for the client. You know, and I certainly there's, for me, I want to make sure <coughs> that carriers are going to take care of clients when shit happens. And as you know, some look for reasons to, uh, what's the word? Uh, where do you, when you, when you, uh, rescind. yes, where you rescind the pot, like some look for that. I'm like, I ain't fired up about that. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know, man. I just, I want it to be easy for the agent and easy for the client. You know, I, th I think that's really it. I mean, the comp is what it is. You know, products are what they are. They're going to change with time. You know, there's always good, bad, and ugly with all carriers and all IMOs and all people. It just is what it is. You know, so for me, the easier the better. Uh, great answer. So come up and make your stuff easy, which it is. I mean, I've sold, I've put a lot of interest to y'all over the years. <sighs> oh, yeah. So thank you. I appreciate you telling me, man. A um, couple things. If y'all want more stuff, some of y'all are already in it. We have a school group. Y'all familiar with school? It's like a little online community thing. I put out tons of free training. So if you just johnwetmore.com slash school, you can go there, register, come in. I give away all kinds of shit in there. Um, and then I'm doing a, I do a ton of calls. We're doing it Monday Is it at 2, 2 Eastern. I'm going to be going over like the top <coughs> problems and things that are preventing people from growing and scaling. Um, this is what, this call I do once a month. If you go johnwetmore.com slash mastermind, johnwetmore.com slash mastermind, you can register to Zoom Monday, uh, two Eastern and jump on. And then you'll be in our email list and all the other stuff that goes out, we'll send to you. Um, Cause I do a ton of, ton of free trainings and things like that to try to help. So that it, nothing else. Cool. I right, guess.
Appreciate you.